नमस्ते दोस्तों दिस इज दिनेश द एडमिन ऑफ इंडियन टेम्पल चैनल एंड एज यूजल आई एम अगेन बैक लाइव विद वन ऑफ वेरी गुड वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग गेस्ट वी ऑलवेज ट्राई टू ब्रिंग अबाउट सम गेस्ट हु आर डूइंग सम गुड वर्क इन कल्चर और इन गुड वर्क इन रिसर्च एंड हिस्ट्री एंड टूडे ऑल्सो वी हैव वन वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग गेस्ट विद अस Yeah, welcome Reva. Welcome to uh, thank you for having another, me. Yeah, welcome to another episode of Indian Temples interview. Uh, friends, uh, to introduce uh, Reva Rawat uh, for you, she is a writer and director. Uh, she is an alumni of Queen's University Canada, where she was awarded with the Dean's Excellence Award and scholarship. Currently, she is studying for BA in history from uh, UK Open University. She has written two indie short films as well as directed two music videos. She is currently working with uh, Swastik Productions and writing a feature film with them. Uh, she is also assistant director for Hotstar series Escape Live. And most important of all, uh, the reason why I have invited her today is she is the director of Kathak Adi Kathak. It's a documentary series uh, that talks about the relation between the Kathak dance and uh, temple sculptures. So please welcome uh, Reva to this show. Thank you. Yeah. the yeah, first thing uh, i wanted i want to know from you uh, for our audience can you inter- introduce this movie can you t- tell what this movie is about yes so uh, this is basically a feature length documentary it's a one and a half hour documentary on the history of kathak and its relationship to ancient sculptures and the natya shastra uh, this film has been done by bhandarkar oriental research institute and i'm the director of okay. the film it is based on the research done by guru roshan dati so uh, guru roshan dati is a kathak dancer exponent art historian and a scholar from pune and bhandarkar institute is also from pune so uh, in general there is this perception that kathak only has a 300 400 year old history it originated during the mughal era but uh, what roshan dai's belief and what her thought process was that uh, nothing originates from scratch you know everything has a uh, a starting point way before it you know tradition flows from one thing to to another it doesn't start from scratch so uh, what she did was uh, that she thought why not study the correlation between dance sculptures and kathak because we don't have a lot of written material or written sources for uh, kathak as uh, in north india you know due to a lot of attacks and a lot of wars the temples were not very well preserved but she studied temples which were well preserved like khajuraho or she visited almost 50 60 locations and she found a striking similarity in the positions that we do in that dance form to the kind of contemporary poses that we perform in kathak even today but we can't identify those poses because they are so fast that you know you can't stop the dance and understand that this is that position like unlike in bharatnatyam or odissi you actually take that position and pause for a bit that is not how we do it in kathak so she started studying those sculptures and she realized that there is a name for that position in the natya shastra so the natya shastra has 108 karanas or which are karana is to do something so karana is to do so there are 108 positions shown uh, written in the natya shastra of how to cut like perform a position and uh, she gave names to all of those sculptures in multiple temples in Rajasthan Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh and she's been researching on this topic for almost 20 years now and she wrote a book on this topic called Kathak Adi Kathak so uh, i have also been learning dance for almost 13 14 years now and uh, i study under a disciple of uh, guru roshan dati so uh, i had been reading this research and been hearing about it for a long time and then i got into film making and i thought you know the book is in hindi it's a 300 400 page book in hindi and you know people who are in the field will be able to understand it because a lot of technical words have been used and dance inherently as it is an audio visual medium i thought why not make a film out of this topic because then you'll immediately be able to understand the younger generation will be able to access it a lot more because especially younger dancers won't be able to understand that high high level hindi so uh, we decided to make a film on this topic and that's how we started working on this and uh, like i said it's a one and a half hour film 
on this topic and it also talks about indian culture and indian heritage because when we went out there we realized that there is so much about our culture that we just you know don't know or we just assumed that it is backward so this film is also about what all different practices do we follow in india and what is the origin of that what have we under- what is the discrepancy between what we follow and what they have wanted to say so we've tried to bridge that gap also through this film it's not just about dance but also about what is what was ancient india lanpanapasna mala kathak madhe itihas nahi kathak madhe shastra nahi asa mahiti hota I think that was also my belief for a while until I read Roshan Tai's research because I think she's the first one who's come up with this fact that we can trace it back around 2000 years to the Natya Shastra. So wonderful to see what I learn in my dance class today to be sculpted on the walls of some 9th century temple and एवढं कनेक्शन एवढं स्टार कनेक्शन त्यांच्यामध्ये आहे स्कल्पचर्स आर रेकॉर्डेड हिस्ट्री दे गिव अस अ ग्लिम्स इन टू द पास्ट इन टू हाव आर्ट अँड कल्चर वॉज ड्युरिंग दॅट पर्टिक्युलर टाइम रोशन ताई ट्राय टू सर्च फॉर द हिस्ट्री ऑफ कथक डान्सर्स इन द स्कल्पटेड हिस्ट्री ऑन द वॉल्स शी ट्राय टू रीच द रूट ऑफ अर डान्स फॉर्म डान्सरवरनं मूर्ती बनवली असेल तर मूर्तीवरनं डान्स करायला शिकलं पाहिजे हे जे मी म्हणते हे सर्वांना पटेल असं नव्हतं त्याही वेळेला असं मला वाटतं कारण नाट्यशास्त्राचा आणि कथकचा कोणी संबंधच लावला होता आणि मी तर एकदम डायरेक्टली कर्णांवरच गेले तर त्यामुळे तर कदाचित लोकांना त्याचं एवढं वाटलं नसावं की हे बरोबर आहे म्हणून stand in front of the walls of the temples you suddenly see it is not only the dance that you look at it is basically the culture and the tradition and the society that you look at it's a big responsibility as a carrier of this tradition to at least carry forward the thought that was there in the past that's interesting yeah uh, actually when we, uh, you were talking about karnas and uh, various dance forms yeah. uh, i thought of a fr- uh, i was thinking of friend uh, hima who had just joined us hima is uh, dr hima bindu kanoj as a uh, name goes she is a uh, dancer and researcher she has done phd in dance and she is also doing a very similar research uh, in telangana where she is uh, trying to correlate the dance forms with the uh, temple sculptures so <clears throat> Uh, I thought it would be interesting to invite uh, Hima as well uh, on on this interview. Welcome, Hima. Hello. Thank you, Dinesh. And uh, hello, Reval. It's really a pleasure to hello. meet you here. You too. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so I mean, I was just uh, listening to your introduction. And uh, uh, at Indian temples, we have been really uh, what I should say that we have been trying to explore the different kinds of facets of Indian temple architecture and. Uh, uh what are the kind of different things and i really find lot of similarities to my work over here yeah. so uh one thing i would uh, it first thing is i want to start it is really a commendable job what you doing uh it's not very easy it's not at all easy to actually try to understand a sculpture because a sculpture is a frozen moment and to again uh, correlate to it to the technique which we do it you know in movement is totally a very very stupendous task and to actually authenticate it or correlate it with the second century treatise like natya shastra uh, it's like absolutely wonderful and uh, it's it, it's really inspirational for many of the dancers who would want to explore beyond their uh, practice and performance into research and to understand actually where as you said 
uh, where does it start? Not from the scratch, but beyond the scratch, right? It does not start there. So that's what uh, I would really like to appreciate you and also uh, uh, Guru uh, Roshan Ma'am for, for doing such a being such a great inspiration. It's been really wonderful. And uh, so here, uh, yeah, yeah. Please tell me. No, I just thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So one thing I just was stuck in one place that uh, you were saying that uh, you were you're trying to uh, give names to the uh, movement yeah so I would like to understand here uh, whether those names were something related I mean uh, are there something new which you have developed or trying to identify it with the uh, Karanas in the Natya Shastra and naming it similarly so it was a different thing yeah. or something taken from the Natya Shastra itself this is one thing which was yeah. actually uh, so, yeah uh, it is something which is already in the Natya Shastra. Say, for example, the Prasar to the Karan, we perform it like this in Katha. Mm -hmm. So, that mm -hmm. name has already been given in the Natya Shastra, and we were trying to see if we even Katha follows that practice. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. that is what we are trying to correlate. Ki dance doesn't start from scratch. There is something, there is a base, and then you're going ahead with that base which has been given. So, the names are already given in the Natya Shastra, and we perform almost 30 to 40. Karnas regularly which are written in the Natya Shastra in Kathak there are 20 to 30 more which we don't perform very regularly but are seen in Kathak and then there are 30 or 40 which we don't do at all which we see in Bharat Natyam or Odissi so Natya Shastra uh, is not it was a base for all types of Indian dance forms it was not particularly for one dance form and all yeah. the Indian classical dance forms like maybe Odissi Kuchipudi Bharat Natyam, Kathak, they all, you know, follow some of the practices written in it. So it's it's kind of like an ocean and then the rivers of different dance forms which come out of it. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that because when it comes to the uh, similarities, uh, well, what was my research based on was like uh, uh, my work went with the sculptures of the Vijayanagara times. Right. Uh, we were trying to focus on one timeline. So uh, we took up uh, Vijayanagara times and during that we tried to correlate that movement to the, not only to the Natya Shastra, because uh, in Natya Shastra we see the Maga uh, tradition, uh, traditional form which has been there. So we tried to compare it to the Karanas and uh, to understand whether there were any changes. I mean, yeah. Uh, maybe there is a difference. As you said, just now you were showing me a movement of a Kathak thing. It might be the same thing, but when it comes to Kuchipuri or Bharatanatyam, the hands are more stretched out. And it's right. like, you know, the kind of, uh, in Bharatanatyam, it's kind of more geometrical. In Kuchipuri, a little similar to Odyssey, wherein we try to not really totally stretch our hand, but give a bend at the elbow. But the movement is actually the same. It derives from the same Karana. Yeah. But yeah. then it's just like, like flavor. Uh, how different flavors the food is the same but then the flavor changes according to the region so it's exactly. the same thing so Nati Yastra is like a, a pan Indian treatise wherein you know different kinds of uh, flavors uh, are spread out from the Nati Shastra so yeah. uh, this is one thing very uh, beautiful and uh, also I would like to know that uh, when you were saying that you were I mean you, you were working on the uh, North Indian style of temple so have you uh, try to uh, I mean look at any kind of a South Indian movement and understand whether are there is there any connection between the South Indian temples and the North Indian I mean you know kind of sometimes the right. questions yeah. do come in our mind right? Right. so yeah. Oh, I think that's a very good question. Uh, the exact thing which you said right now, the way that you do it in Bharatanatyam or Kuchipudi with the hand more stretched, that is different to how you do it in Kathak. So you notice that a difference even in the sculptures. So if you go to South Indian temples, they have a bend in the knee while doing that position. So if you go to Chidambaram or all of these places, there's a bend in the knee which shows it is Bharatanatyam, even though it's the same position. Whereas if you go to North Indian temples, like especially in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat, they don't have a bend in the knee. They are done oh, in a standing up position the way you do it in Kathak. Oh. So that's why Great. So you understand the different kind of movements. There is a real, uh, so uh, there is really a difference between the movements between the South and the North Indian yeah. cultures too. Right? Yeah, okay. even, even if it is the same Karna, even if it is Prasarpita Karna, you will see mm. that so it is basically done like this, but the knee mm. or the leg position is different. So in South India, you will yeah. probably see a bend in the knee or when you go to the eastern side like yeah. Kuchipudi or uh, Orissi, there is, you know, uh, there is a 
గర్భగుడి Uh, which was like kind of nobody knew and uh, in the archaeological survey uh, cleaning or the restoration part they accidentally bumped into that uh, floor and when they started you know kind of uh, cleaning it there came out the karanas and the 108 move movements of the of lord shiva and it was like that's where uh, dr padma subramanian later on she came to do uh, she uh, she has worked on that and she has worked that so uh, <coughs> when you doing like uh, in the temple sculptures uh, so it is the uh, do you see specifically of uh, the movements of the uh, gods i mean the divinities or even the, uh, the the dancers or you know the social life do do does dance reflect yeah. even in those and did you try to work it out in your documentary i mean because i am sorry i couldn't get a chance to still <laughs> watch your documentary but i'm just trying to understand that absolutely 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 so it's not just gods uh, doing those dances there are actually specific dancers maybe male dancers or female dancers like there's a very interesting murti of a ganpati doing something called the third thing third position which we wow. do in, which is yeah. very specific but there yeah. are a lot of dancers like if you go to sanchi there is a sculpture of and you know, of ambalika who does this prasar oh. prasar karna so ambalika was a dancer of that period and th- that yes. is how we understood that she is you know a dancer and this is a dance position it's not just any position who she is taken because she was shown under a mango tree and then those mangoes are a symbolism of who she is or what her name was so that's yeah. how you know you decipher it's not just dance but who is doing it what are they doing it why are they doing it and how is that even shown is very interesting to decipher yeah absolutely i can really totally understand and visualize the scenario and yeah, yeah uh, i'm really looking forward to watch the documentary and uh, uh, hopefully you know we are uh, we're joining together very soon in hyderabad and uh, coming uh, together for the screening yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you Dinesh. Uh, thank you so much for calling me in. Welcome. And it was really a wonderful a great pleasure talking to you Reva and I wish you. you that you do more work, you know, and we thank all you. Uh, uh uh you know kind of uh, work more on our culture, on our arts and our visual arts especially uh and try to bring in that scenario and let's hope for the best. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. So it was really interesting to see two two experts talking on this topic. Uh, I am actually a newbie when it comes to dance or any kind of uh, performing style performance, and I don't I don't really know much about any any kind of dance performances. So uh, I suppose there would be many uh, like me in the audience who uh, who don't know much about various dance forms. So uh, I would like to actually know from you about Kathak, uh, what Kathak is or what exactly it is because. Uh, as of uh, uh, many of us we all, uh, only know kathak from bollywood dances like pyar kiya to darna kya or then uh, kahe ched ched bohe from devdas we only know kathak from these couple of the dan- dances that we have seen so uh, maybe if you can if you can throw light on what what kathak is how it evolved in india that would be very interesting to know yeah so even i am not an expert i'm just a filmmaker who's made a film on kathak but i'll try my best to give justice to your question uh so kathak is basically it originated in rajasthan and what we've traced is it goes back to almost 3rd 4th century bce uh and okay. the tradition started from that period and uh during the mughal period it evolved a lot because people got patronage from those kings and a lot of contemporary things that we see in kathak origin originated during that time i think in bollywood uh, the kind of representation of kathak which has been shown is that it's a very fast dance uh, there's a lot of nazakat in it but if you see actual traditional kathak performances uh, there's even a beauty in the slow movements which are shown in kathak 
so uh, we do a lot of footwork we do a lot of spins and uh, the th- there are two aspects like for any dance there is abhinay and then there is nrutya so the nrutya kathak is one of the only like it is the only uh, classical dance form which performs tal in its entirety like it performs a separate separate section of tal uh, and even in the abhinayas we do a lot of thumri it we, we see a lot of uh, influence from the uh, northern parts of india the kind of stories that are told so that's basically what kathak is yeah interesting that you mentioned uh, the stories being told because yes. uh, yeah when we uh, see the indian uh, the sculptures on indian temple that that's uh, actually something we more, uh, mostly focus on uh, many sculptures tell different stories uh, through the stones yes and uh, when we when we look at the similarities between dance stories or uh, sculptures or maybe literature they all are doing the same they are uh, telling different stories so when i was actually uh, searching about kathak uh, for this interview i uh, came across some articles that uh, talk about how bhakti movement uh, evolved along with the uh, dance or how dance helped uh, the bhakti movement to evolve in maybe 13th or 14th century so uh, if you can throw some light how literature or different bhajans how bhajan uh, were used uh, to say uh, i mean to promote kathak or how kathak was uh, used to promote uh, religion and spirituality on that part if, uh, if you can be right. honest i don't know much about it but you know kathak literally means to tell a story katha katha kahe yeah. so katha kahlave is the uh, okay. line behind it so in kathak you we are basically storytellers we tell different stories so it may be of any form like bhajans or spirituality we are telling stories of radha krishna or vishnu or all of the different deities we are even telling stories from the mahabharata so obviously the content is panish you know the kind of stories that are being told the mythology is the same the way we are presenting it is different so i am not very sure if there was a big uh, boost during the uh, during the bhakti movement but definitely there must have been because you know dance was performed before 14th or 15th century before it went to the uh, courts it was performed in temples it was used as a way to communicate with the locals it was a language or a medium because uh, the locals they were you know they were not literate literacy rates were very low so how do you tell a story how do you create awareness in the people how do you you know uh, tell stories from the past that was through dance through performing arts through music so definitely they must have used it as a medium because you know you we we tell so many stories through different kinds of mediums maybe be social media or film so during that time these kind of performing arts were the main mediums interesting you also told about uh, your inspiration behind making this movie you yourself are a uh, kathak performer you have learned kathak yeah. uh, and then you thought maybe this story could uh, could uh, could be shared and more people should should be aware of it yes, so uh, now i wanted to know about uh, this particular movie uh, how you start when you uh, thought of it uh, when you thought of starting on this project yeah. what was the research methodology that you used what uh, how did your research go so uh, basically the base of that research had already been done by guru roshan dat she has been working on this for the past 20 years like i said so she wrote a book on this topic in 2009 and in 2019 uh, i thought of i came up with this idea that you know why not make a film on this because it's dance is inherently a visual medium like i said its stories are best told in that uh, medium so uh, we decided to make this film on this topic and the book was already there as a base uh, and then we approached bhandarkar institute ab- uh, with this idea and they were immediately on board with it this w- this is a first film that bhandarkar has made before that they published a lot of written material a lot of books and research articles uh, so we approached them with this film they came on board they gave us a specific grant through infosys foundation and then we did a crowdfunding campaign through which we collected a huge sum even uh, sudha murthy ma'am has donated a huge sum for the film and uh, she's promoted the film so uh, through that then with that grant our team traveled to almost 12 13 locations in north india specifically in rajasthan gujarat and madhya pradesh so we traveled to different temples buddhist stupas jain temples like uh, khajuraho dilwada ranakpur or we went to rani ki wow in gujarat uh, and sanchi stupa in uh, madhya pradesh we traveled to all of these locations searching for specific dance murtis and then how can 
then we relate that to kathak so we spent almost like 7 8 hours on each single temple like actually going through all of those cultures and trying to understand what it was and when roshan tai had initially done her research with her students uh, she had you know she clicked pictures with whatever camera she had then and she went to almost 50 locations then we only covered 12 for the sake of the film and for the brevity of the film and she came back and actually studied each position correlated that with big dancers doing those positions like she's had photos from pandit birju maharaj and pandit rajendra gangani and all of these people from different gharanas of kathak so it's not just one gharana but you see the similarity in all the gharanas and then she you know matched those pictures and understood that okay this is how we see this position in this dance form or in this dancer and then she tried to find names of that in the natya shastra and then that is how she correlated the entire thing and so for the film we you know we used that base as a research and we clicked more pictures because was 20 years later after so much research you see more or you know more so she was traveling with us uh, with through the entire thing and she helped us with a lot of that and then that is how we did the research for the film okay that is interesting <coughs> recently even uh, i uh, as i earlier mentioned Dr. Hima Bindu Kanoj is working on a similar project in uh, the temples of Telangana. Right. And uh, I had uh, I had also joined uh, joined her uh, in couple of visits, uh, especially yeah. to the Nalgonda region in uh, Telangana, Nalgonda as well as in uh, Nizamabad. So even there, uh, I could find many sculptures that are very very much uh, amusing, very much interesting, and they are related to different dance forms. Yeah. So it's really com- commendable uh, that uh, you have uh, visited so, so many temples for this research. Uh, you mentioned about uh, three, three, four, three or four names. You mentioned Ranakpur, Rani Kiva, uh, Khajuraho, Sanchi. Uh, if you can list down uh, other places as well for our audience, so that whenever okay. they are visiting next, they yeah. can observe more. Yeah, so uh, there is Kumbharia uh, temple in Gujarat, Kumbharia Jain temples. There is Taranga Jain temples. Uh, Dilwada is especially beautiful if you go to Rajasthan. We went to Gwalior Fort, so there are Teliki Mandir in Gwalior. Uh, Chittor Fort we visited. Uh, then you okay. also find a lot of temples in Jagat's Ambika Mata temple. That that has beautiful, beautiful sculptures. So you find it, you know, in different 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 cultural backgrounds and you find similarity in that so that's really great you also find you know other than kathak even in maharashtra or all of these regions south indian temples are multiple temples but if you specifically want to see kathak north india is the region where you need to go okay uh, i actually would like to know more about the similarities that you have found in dance cultures and uh, the dances but uh, I, I i will actually skip that question right now because I want the audience to see the movie rather yeah. than just uh, learning everything from you. Yeah. And in fact, I also, I also, uh, firstly, when I uh, saw the trailer of the movie, I was really awestruck uh, by the sheer quality or sheer uh, enthusiasm that I could uh, feel from the trailer. And yesterday, when I uh, got to watch some parts of the movie, I, I didn't actually wa- watch the complete movie because I wanted uh, to watch along with all other uh, people. But I still went through a few uh, minutes of the movie. Yeah. And then I was really, really, I've been mean, uh, surprised to know uh, how much knowledge we uh, we can get from this particular movie. So uh, I would actually skip the question about uh, the what similarities you found or uh, how did you find the temple sculptures and how they can correlate. I would actually sk- uh, keep it for the for audience to watch in the movie. Yeah. And coming to that point, coming to point of uh, watching the movie, I wanted to know from you how we we all can watch the movie. What are the different ways that uh, in which we uh, we can uh, lay our hands on the movie? So uh, basically, right now we're conducting screenings in different cities all over India. Uh, and so we've done a few screenings in Pune, we've done them in Bangalore and now the next one with Indian temples also we're collaborating to show the film in uh, Hyderabad and Chennai and Latur as well. So uh, along with that, we're also approaching different institutions to show it all over India. So if any of you are in, interested in collaborating, you can definitely uh, contact us on our Kathakadi Kathak page uh, on Instagram. We have our contact details there. So you can watch this watch this film in all of these private screenings, and eventually we're hoping to uh, show like finally put the film on Bhandarkar Institute's platform and we're searching for other options as well. Uh, friends, uh, those who are watching this live or those who will watch it later on uh, YouTube or Instagram, uh, 
uh, if if you want to uh, arrange a screening at your place you can just get in touch with the instagram page kathak adi kathak i will be sharing the link in the description uh, you can uh, get in touch with them you can definitely arrange the screening in this in the, your uh, own place you won't really need too much efforts to arrange when uh, I, i earlier thought that it would be very difficult to arrange the screening but when i started with the process i realized that it's very simple process it won't take any time it won't take much of uh, financial burdens as well it is very easy and uh, it's very easy to share knowledge in that way uh, they have done a commendable work a detailed and research, uh, a very detailed research work all we have to do is just share a mo- share the movie with the uh, audience in your place so i request everyone to take initiative to uh, arrange screening in your respective place we are always here to help you out if if you need any kind of guidance or uh, help or suggestions uh, also uh, saying uh, talking about screening of the movie Uh, along with the special screening private screening that you are doing uh, yes. is it possible to uh, arrange a uh, private screening in virtual platform as well so that uh, uh, people, yeah so that we'll people from various yeah. different location can mm-hmm. join we're completely open to that idea mm-hmm. and we'd love if anyone you know is interested to host us will uh, show the screening online as well once we figure out the logistics of all of it yeah Yeah. because yesterday we conducted a poll on uh, our instagram page i shared a poster of uh, the kathakadi kathak and i asked audience uh, if they they would like to arrange a special screening and almost 86% of them responded with uh, wow. yes they yeah. <laughs> yeah so they are interested in uh, watching the film and i will uh, once check, check with the technical details and logistics of the screening process and then uh, we'll go ahead with it okay so <clears throat> when we talk about uh, this movie and uh, as also hima mentioned earlier about her research work uh, in telangana temple so i wanted to know if you are also i mean uh, you you will be uh, doing more research on a similar topic or similar ways for other dance forms as well along with kathak so i individually i'm a filmmaker mm-hmm. i i make films on various subjects but pandarkar okay. institute as such you know if they get any specific project like this they definitely be interested in taking it forward and uh mm-hmm. if we get an interesting project like roshan dai's work was you know she had already done a lot of research so if we want to make a film on any other topic for anyone who's interested in doing this research or has done a lot of it we definitely be interested in uh joining the team okay depending on the project yeah okay uh there are some comments that are coming up the those are uh, mostly wishing you good luck for the screening Thanks. and uh, congr- congratulating you for uh, the good work that you have done uh, in terms of research okay <coughs> uh so do those were mostly the questions that were on my mind when i got to know about your yeah. documentary Uh, if there are any uh, particular details that you would like to share on you uh, from your side that i may have missed uh, please if you uh, can share no worry ali so we've made this film out of uh, the thought that we want to reach out to as many like we want this research to reach out to as many people as possible as well as spread you know awareness about indian culture so uh, we hope to show this film to as many people as possible and if anyone is interested do let us know we're very open to collaborating uh, and yeah that's it uh, yeah so thank you reva thank you very much for joining us today uh, I know I'm a, a kind of a newbie when it comes to dance so maybe my question might have been uh, no. mostly from a newbie's point of view <laughs> uh, but I I I I hope our audience got to know a lot lot about uh, this interesting topic even I would be uh, studying more on this topic and maybe in future we can also uh, once again uh, join for an interview and we can discuss more about this topic or uh, similar topics definitely yes yeah thank you very thank much you so. thank you very much reva joining for joining us thank you thank you